When it comes to Google Ads, what type of person are you? Are you the ultimate Google Ads fanboy or fangirl who just believes everything that Google says and blindly applies all of the recommendations that Google gives them in their account because they just truly believe that it's Google's main purpose in order to give them the highest quality clicks and conversions? Or are you the jaded, untrusting Google Ads professional who purposely goes against anything that Google recommends because you believe you are the shining knight to stop Google sending poor quality traffic and spam bots to your Google Ads campaigns. So if you believe Google is a click angel or absolutely evil, why don't you put your thoughts down in the comments section below. But for me, I believe that Google is neither. Google is not good or evil. Do I believe that Google has my best interests at heart and that they spend every waking moment in order to give me the best quality traffic for my Google Ads campaigns? No, I don't believe that at all. But then I also do not believe that Google is proactively sending poor quality traffic my way in order to just waste my money. Because I truly believe, and I've seen time and time again, that taking either of these viewpoints where you're very pro Google or very anti Google is actually very, very dangerous for your Google Ads campaigns and it's gonna waste a lot of money for your business. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through why both of these extremes are wrong. And if you stay to the end of this video, I'll also take you through how you can walk that tightrope so that you can get the best success with Google Ads for your business or your client's businesses. So firstly, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you why you do not wanna be just believing everything that Google says and just clicking apply to all of those recommendations because as I said, it can be really detrimental to your account, which is what the owner of this account found out the hard way. Let's have a look. Now, what I wanna confirm right at the start of the screen share is that this is not an account that I was managing while these performances were happening. So this owner has reached out to me and I am helping them to restore their account. So this is definitely not an account that I was responsible for. What happened here was that I had done an initial setup for this Google Ads account and it was performing really well. Then they went and took on the management internally. And what happened was that their internal team member just accepted all of the recommendations that Google gave them. And what these recommendations were is that these recommendations added over 200 broad match keywords. It also added in a portfolio bidding strategy. And then on top of all of that, it actually actually recommended to enable some old search campaigns. So they had the situation where we had a structure set up where they had a performance max campaign, which was targeting new traffic with some really specific niche search campaigns, but they then duplicated those search campaigns. So they were targeting the same traffic across multiple different campaigns. So it was all a bit of a mess, but the main thing being is that they were just going through and when any of these recommendations were coming in, they were just going through it and accepting them as soon as they came up. And you can see what happened here is over a 90 day period comparing the previous 90 days is that you know they ended up spending a good extra 30% in income. So going up from 6,000 through to 8,000 in ad spend, but they actually got 88 less conversions and the cost per conversion just tripled. It absolutely skyrocketed. And you can actually even see here, they got less traffic. So it was kind of like, it was the perfect storm of unqualified traffic that was more expensive and just super, super high acquisition costs. And this is what happens when you just blindly accept all of the recommendations that the Google Google dashboard gives you. Now, I know that that is a very, very extreme example, but that's a very clear example of why you don't just blindly follow all of the recommendations that Google gives you. So we know that that's not the best way to see success with Google Ads. But how about the other view where you are super, super negative towards Google and you don't believe anything they say and you don't take on any of their changes? And for me, that is just as detrimental to the success of your Google Ads campaigns as well. And currently there are three main issues that people are really fighting against. And I find this more for people who have been involved in Google Ads for more than five years. So people that have been in Google Ads before 2020. And because there's three main areas where Google has fundamentally changed. And this is all about their Google keyword match targeting, also around the conversion acquisition, and then finally around the new type of campaigns like Performance Max that have come in to the fore in Google Ads. Now we could talk for hours hours on each of these. And firstly, when it comes to the keyword match targeting, this is essentially around an increased focus on broad match keywords. And you're gonna see more and more over the coming months and years that Google is gonna dive further and further into what it's calling search themes. And I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years from now that we're actually not even really talking about keywords, we're talking about themes. And 
The way that I really see the current play as we sit right now in 2024 is that even though that Google Ads still does offer phrase match, for me, phrase match is irrelevant and I'm only using broad match and exact match. Now, as I said, this topic in its own is a super, super large topic. So what I wanna do is that if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you where you can watch some extra teaching on this where I really break down the most successful strategy to use for your keyword targeting in 2024. So that's the first area that people are super negative towards which can be detrimental to the performance of their account. And that's about the new match types, especially about the use of broad match keywords. Secondly, is all about the conversion attribution. Now, for a long time when Google Ads started, it was the well-accepted industry standard that you would use last click attribution because you would then get a very, very clear understanding of people clicked on the ad and then they would go through and convert. And there has been a lot of people who have fought against this and haven't wanted to engage the data-driven acquisition because they believe that Google will then over exaggerates the conversion metrics inside of the Google Ads campaign. Now, while that may be true, you do also have to understand that when last click or first click acquisition came in is that users were using internet very, very differently. And since then, there's been a massive increase in social media use. So very, very rarely, unless it's for an emergency service, like you've got a broken toilet and you need a plumber or you've lost power to your house and you need an electrician. In those cases, very much people will still do the search and click on it and convert straight away but for the vast majority of other campaigns an individual conversion is going to happen through not only a search query some display marketing some retargeting some social media use some organic results it's going to be a combination of those things that's why the data driven acquisition models is important for conversions and what I find the common mistake is here is that people are so negative towards this data attribution models they are missing the full story now for me when it comes to conversion tracking inside of Google Ads while I do believe that conversion version tracking is important, I accept that we're never gonna get that 100% correct. And what I really look at is I look at the underlying trend for that business. And what I mean by that is that if we can all agree with a certain level of conversion tracking inside of Google Ads, we can then use that as a benchmark so that if we increase our spend by 20%, are we seeing a greater than 20% revenue increase in our bottom line revenue and our profit markers? And if that's the case, we then know we can continue to scale. So for me, I find that people get so hung up about whether the data inside of Google Ads conversion is 100% accurate. Whereas for me, it's more about trends. Are we comfortable with that trend so that we can use the data inside of Google Ads in order to use it as a fairly reliable tool in order to scale our accounts? And then that third area where I see people are being overly negative is about the new type of campaigns like these Performance Max campaigns. And the big thing that I find here is that people are trying to use these campaigns in a way that they were never designed to be used. You know, with classic examples being that people would set up their asset groups based around audiences and trying to target different audiences in the same asset group and duplicating asset groups to target different types of audiences, where Google makes it very, very clear that you can't do that. You can't use an individual asset group to target a certain amount of audiences. The way that Performance Max was designed was that in those asset groups, you can direct around different search themes or different groups of products, even though you add in some different audiences in there, Google is gonna go beyond those audiences. The other thing that I do find is that people are using Performance Max in the wrong way. When Performance Max came out, it was very much designed to generate more conversions. It, what it looks to do is it looks to grab the current conversion data that you have in Google Ads and then try and find some similar or related audiences in order to bring new customers in and find new conversions with a lot of people saying, well, Google just targets branded traffic. And for me, what the problem is there is that they're using the Performance Max in the wrong way. With the correct strategy that you should be using for Performance Max is using it to target new customers only so that it's not gonna be overriding your search campaigns because if you've got a good keyword structure in your search campaigns with exact match keywords, that is gonna take precedence over targeted searches. And then you can also add your own brand as the brand exclusion. So you will still see some branded search, but the thing that I always remind people is that would that user have searched your brand if they hadn't first seen the collection of display, Gmail, discovery type ads in the weeks and months prior to them completing that search? So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. So, so far what I've taken you through is the problem with people being really, really pro Google and just blindly following everything they say. But then the other side is that it's just as detrimental 
potential to be really, really negative Google. And that's why I say, for me, Google is neither good nor evil. And now let's get to how can you succeed at Google Ads. And the first thing that goes without saying is that you need to make sure that you're optimizing your campaigns correctly. So what I wanna do right now to help you with that, because I wanna get onto these last two really, really important points, is that if you wanna make sure that you're optimizing your Google Ads campaigns the right way, just follow that link in the description below after you watch this video and you can get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklists. And I've got these checklists for not only for search campaigns, but also for e-commerce campaigns. Follow that link in the description below and you will never miss any important optimization actions that you need to complete. That now brings us to this last important point about how do you get success with Google Ads. And for me, this comes down to two simple steps. Firstly, you need to create your campaigns in a way that gives Google, gives the platform what it wants. And then secondly, you need to have ads and content that give the user what they want. So you need to have ads and content that resonate with the user. So it's essentially two steps. You're first giving Google what it wants, and then you're also giving the user what they want, and the user being people who are searching for your related services or your related products. This is no different to any other platform. So if you think of any platform, so like YouTube, where we go for YouTube, what they want is they want time on the platform. You know, all of the social media giants like TikTok and Meta, they also want people to stay on their platform. So they reward content creators who give them their goal of getting people to stay on their platform for longer. With Google Ads, it's all about getting clicks. And the reason for why that's so important for Google is because Google gets paid when people click on their ads. So for me, what I've always focused on when it comes to creating a successful Google Ads campaign is I firstly wanna make sure that my campaign is set up in a way that, that is gonna be rewarded by Google for getting a high click-through ratio. And so what I've always aimed to do is to have a higher click-through ratio than my competitors. And the way that you can kind of test to see what your competitors are getting, if you go to the description below, I'll put a link to data that's given by WordStream, which gives industry standards about click-through ratios. And if I saw that my related industry had a click-through ratio of 7%, I'd be looking at getting a click-through ratio of at least 10%, but ultimately 15% or higher. And the way that I do that is through my different split copy tests. So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm giving Google incentive to show my ads over my competitors' ads because I'm getting clicks. So the first thing is, is that we give Google what it wants. That's getting clicks because that's how get Google gets paid. Now, we don't only just want clicks, we also want conversions. And the reason for that is because that's when we get paid as the business owners, or if we are a Google Ads manager, that's how we keep our clients happy because their business is getting conversions. And that then comes down to having ad copy that resonates with the user, but also when they're going to your landing page that they're finding relevant information that makes it easy for them to buy your services or your products. So for me, that's where how you get success with Google Ads. So no longer think about whether Google is good or evil. What you really always wanna be focusing on, regardless of how complex your Google Ads account is, is that you need to have these three things in play. Highly targeted keywords or highly targeted product groupings, it needs to be relevant ad copy, which is not only gonna generate clicks, but it's also pre-queuing the user on what you want them to do when they get to your website and then have high converting web pages, which not only makes it easy for the user to get the information that they need, but it also is a simple checkout and conversion process. So rather than thinking that Google is your saver or their enemy, just remember that Google is neutral and it's all up to you creating the high quality traffic with high quality and relevant ad copy, leading people to those high converting landing pages. And that's how you see success with Google Ads. Once again, thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And as promised in the video, if you wanna see more about why you should stop using phrase match targeting with your keywords, go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.